Chapter 10 is all about exponents, and we're going to do um, some advanced operations with exponents and also incorporate this thing called scientific notation. Let's first take care of a little vocabulary. A power is a product of repeated factors. The base of a power is the common factor. The exponent of a power indicates the number of times the base is used as a factor. So hopefully you know all of this already. Uh, this is how you would write it. These are the vocabulary words we just talked about. One half is the base. The exponent is five. This together when you combine it, uh, base and exponent is considered a power. If you were to solve this, you would get one over 32. So the way you would say that is one half to the fifth power is one over 32. You have to be careful of order of operations. Order of operations always applies all the time for all examples ever. So this example compared to this example, while it looks very similar, the only difference is the parentheses, it changes the value of the answer. Because if you remember from order of operations, exponents come before multiplication. So this negative sign is not representing negative 3. It's representing negative 1 times 3 to the 4th. So you'd have to do 3 to the 4th first and then multiply it by negative 1. This in parentheses is telling you that the negative 3 is the base, whereas here only positive 3 is the base. So it changes the way that you evaluate the answer. So I would like you to get in the habit of using parentheses around negative bases because it does matter. The parentheses do change the value. So we're just going to practice rewriting some things with um, exponents instead of writing them out the long way. Notice that negative 7 is in parentheses telling us that negative 7 is the base. So you put negative 7 in parentheses and then it's being used three times so the exponent is 3. Um, letter B is going to be pi raised to the second power times R raised to the third power. Now you could write pi squared times R to the third, but most people don't write that. They just write it like this. Uh, letter C is the fraction one-fourth, and it's being used five times. Another thing that has to go in parentheses are fractions. If you don't put the fraction in parentheses, then the exponent only applies to the numerator, and the denominator doesn't get the exponent. So this might be something you want to write down. Negatives and fractions should always be written in parentheses. Letter D, uh, 0 0.3 is being used four times, and X is being used twice. Um, I put the 0 0.3 in parentheses just because I felt like it. It doesn't need to be in parentheses, but I just wanted to. Let's evaluate. Now we're going to actually calculate. Evaluate means to find the answer or to solve. So we're actually going to multiply these out. So this says negative 2 to the 4th. So that's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And that gives you, if you multiply it out, you'll get 16. The difference in letter B, remember, be careful. This is saying negative 1 times 2 to the 4th, not negative 2 to the 4th. So this gives me negative 16. Let's write out letter C, negative 1 sixth times negative 1 sixth times negative 1 sixth. So here we go. Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. And again, let's be careful with the negative sign. This is saying negative 1 times 5 to the 4th. And so that is negative 625. When we get to questions where we have to do multiple operations in one question, you always follow the order of operations. When do you follow the order of operations? The answer is always. You always follow the order of operations. Um, so 
first will come exponents, and then I'm going to write out what I've done. Don't skip steps and don't do it in your head. Write it out. 3 plus 2 times 3 to the 4th is 81. So now I have to do 2 times 81 first. So that gives me 3 plus 162. So the answer is 165 follow order of operations. Now I go to letter B. I have two things that have exponents, so I can do those at the same time. 9 minus 64 divided by 2, and I still have to follow order of operations, so I get 9 minus 32, and that is negative 23. All right, if you want to pause the video, try letter C on your own. You can. Let's do it together if you don't want to. I have to do exponents first. 2 to the 5th is 32 times 0.5. I chose to use parentheses because I didn't want to have two dots next to each other. It would just look weird to me. Um, so now I have to do multiplication, 9 minus that is 16. 9 minus 16 is negative 7. Order of operations means do the parentheses, then do the exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Now, do you remember what these vertical lines mean? If you don't write it down, they mean absolute value. Now that I say absolute value, does that mean anything to you? Hopefully it does. It means your distance from zero. So when we get our answer, we'll calculate the distance from zero. Absolute value um, lines function the same way that parentheses do, so I have to do what's inside of it first. Then once I get a number, then I will find its absolute value. So here we go. I have to do exponents first, and this right here tells me negative 1 times 3 to the third divided by 27. So 3 to the third is negative 1 times 27 divided by 27. And then multiplication and division go left to right. So negative 1 times 27 is negative 27 divided by 27 is negative 1. Now don't forget we had absolute value so I got to bring in my absolute value lines and the absolute value of negative 1 is the number 1. Its distance from 0 is 1. Alright, last example together. In sphering, a person is secured inside a small hollow sphere that is surrounded by a larger sphere. The space between the spheres is inflated, so that's this space here. And the person is in here, so they're rolling down this hill in, in this while the ball is rolling. What is the volume of the inflated space? Now, now you can look up the formula for the volume of a sphere. It's 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that's my formula, and now I just have to know how to plug it in. So I'm going to plug in the information from the picture which is here, and they want to know the volume of this. So how do you think we find the volume of this right here? If you said find the volume of the whole thing, I'll call it the big, minus the volume of the inside, which I'll call the small, you are correct. So we're going to find the volume of the whole thing, Subtract out where the person is, and then whatever's left is the inflated part. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So let's plug in what we know. The big sphere is 4 thirds pi. And then the radius of the whole thing is not 3. This is representing the diameter. Look at all the vocabulary that you used to know, and hopefully you still know it. The diameter is 3. That means the radius is 1.5. So we'll calculate that in a moment. Then I'm going to subtract the volume of the small, or the volume of where the person is. So that's going to be 4 thirds pi. And then the radius of the small 
sphere where the person is is not two because that's the diameter it's one and I forgot to cube my radii radii is the plural of radius it's not radiuses so now we just grab a calculator and we plug it in make sure you follow your order of operations exponents will come first so that's four-thirds times pi times 3.375 minus four-thirds pi. Well, I could do one cubed in my head. Duh, that's just one. So now I do multiplication comes next. So four-thirds times pi times 3.375 is, I'll do a couple decimals, 14.137155 minus 4 thirds times pi times 1, 4.188785. Six, six, seven. I'll round my final answer in a moment. So now I subtract. And I hope you have your calculator handy and you are subtracting as well and not just waiting for me to write down what the answer is. I get 9.95. I'll round. 9.95. And there are a couple things I want to mention before we circle this as our final answer. I'm rounding, so I'll say 9.95. I'll say approximately equal to. That's the symbol, two squiggly lines. Approximately equal to 9.95. The label is meters to the third power because it's cubic meters. You could write that as well. Approximately equal to 9.95 cubic meters. That doesn't mean that the 9.95 is cubed. It's telling you that you're talking about a shape that's three-dimensional. So this is the label that we use for volume. If the directions wanted you to round that to anything particular, you could say like 10 cubic meters, whatever you want to say, but I'll leave it as 9.95. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.